what I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a peach if you find the same. And right now, I feel like a hundred grand. You are listening to Inspired Insider with your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise. Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders. This interview is a little bit different. I am talking with my friend, colleague, mentor, Ed O'Keefe, and um, we were we just had a chat, and we decided this is this is really so good and interesting. We are going to record this, and uh, he challenges me. He challenges me on a number of things. So listen to this interview and, and listen to what he challenges me to do. Um, but uh, before I'm going to give you a little introduction about O'Keefe, uh, check out other episodes on Inspired Insider. There's an amazing one. I consider Ed one of the best uh, direct response marketers. Uh, there's an interview also with Todd Brown, where he talks about offers, how important offers are, and he breaks them down. So check out that. Um, there's also another interview with one of my favorite comedians, Elon Gold, and his friend Jason Cement. He does impressions. He uh, actually spends a lot of time making fun of Jason. So listen to that interview with Elon Gold and Jason. And um, before I introduce Ed, this episode is brought to you by Rise 25. At Rise 25, we help businesses give to and connect to their dream 100 relationships. And we do that by helping you run your podcast. And for me, the number one thing in my life is relationships. I'm always looking at ways to give to my relationships. Uh, Ed actually makes a comment on this on our interview. Uh, about and he realizes how important that is to me and how that m- important that is to him as well. So um, if you've thought about starting a podcast, I think you should, uh, especially if you have a business. Um, if you have questions, go to rise25.com to learn more and you could email us for questions at any time um, on our about page. So check that out. And just a little bit about Ed O'Keefe. Um, Ed O'Keefe is a father of seven, grew up in a household of 13. He's author of Time Collapsing. Um, and he used time collapsing methods to leap to the top of different industries. And he started multiple companies from scratch to seven, even eight figures. He was in the dentistry niche. Um, he sold over $50 million in marketing systems and seminars. He started Marine Essentials, uh, which sold over $60 million. And one of the most impressive things is he was a graduate of Kokoro. Um, and which is a 51 hour mini hell week and by commander Mark Devine. So he talks about it. He talks about his experience um, in this uh, conversation. So listen and uh, enjoy. Uh, this is the middle of Ed and I's conversation. We decided to record it. So awesome conversation. Jeremy is like one of my favorite people. I, I thought he was on the treadmill, it, <laughs> but he was, he's walking with his phone and it turned into a long conversation about what he's training for. And I'll let you. Uh, well, you were saying uh, you were you were we were in the middle of conversation. You were saying different stages of life, and then Colin came into your life. Yeah, Colin O'Brien. Time. Okay, so, so everyone understands this, right? So so we were talking about like he's asking me like he's like, hey, you work out a lot, and I said, well, this last year, you know, I really slacked because I have a daughter that we're we're battling Lyme disease. We're 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 recovering. We're we're healing. We're healing. We're working on languaging here in our household, and. Um, and also my son did really well with golf. So I, <laughs> I never was a golfer. So I never spent so much time on a golf course before. So I went from being like really physically fit to like, and I was joking with him saying, Hey, I have the golf body going on right now, which means I'm lean and I am not, I have no muscle. Like I feel weaker than I've been in like six years, <laughs> uh, maybe even longer, like maybe like 10 years. I think, you know, when I used to drink beer and stuff like that, but um, uh, Jeremy made a comment and I think this is really important because a lot of people uh, falsely stop themselves from reaching physical and doing challenges because of this comment, which is like, well, you have done this before, so it's easy for you and it's harder for me. Now, I'm guilty of this. So let me, let me share my story because I, I immediately went into this rant about how there's no shame in like, if you modify things to uh, achieve whatever you are, your peak potential, that's just as I always think like see one of the things I think about CrossFit that's funny is like if we do a workout together and I finish at seven minutes and you finish at 11 minutes in some ways I feel like I'm cheating because and I know there's work capacity and blah 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 the experts talk I I always feel like the people that are uh, working towards the skills 
which is why they're taking longer sometimes. Maybe it's out of, they're out of shape. That's okay too. But it's, it's like they're working harder than I did. And in some ways, I feel like you almost like once you finish your wad, recover, and then it's your job to keep going or support people. But, but one of the experiences I wanted to share with Jeremy was Colin O'Brien, who Colin O'Brien is pretty well known. He's, uh, I met him. I think he's got like four or five world records now. He, he pulled us. He's the, he's the first person to ever pull an unmanned, no, unsupported um, sled. He was unsupported across, I think it was Antarctica. Jeremy, do you know this? Because I had, um, I, was I had sure read it at one point of what it was and it was just amazing what he did. I'm yeah, going to, I'm going to pull it up. Yeah, it was like, it was like, you know, you could die out there type thing. And he did that. He also was the fastest. He, 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 um, I had him on my podcast years ago and I need to get him back on. Um, he's a co-founder of uh, 29029, the uh, Everstein event that Jesse Itzler himself and Mark Hodelik uh, have done. And they just, they just partnered and sold, um, to a company that I, I got to get this straight too. Now that I'm doing podcasting again, Jeremy, I should get all my details in order, but um, I could text them all, find out. But anyhow, when I was climbing um, 29029, my first time we were in Vermont at Stratton Mountain, it was like one in the morning. Uh, I, I was climbing with Jesse Itzler, uh, Nick, uh, and like a really good group of like five guys. And they were heading in, I think after their, I think, they, I think it was like, 17 ascents, ascents, meaning you go up the mountain, you take the gondola down, you, you do it within a 36 hour period and you, you have to get 17 ascents. That was at um, Vermont, which is Stratton Mountain. The one I just did in Utah, I think it was 15 ascents. You know, I might be, I might be a little wrong on some of it. Uh, but my first time ever doing it, it was a new experience for me. And um, I mentally wanted to get like past the halfway point so that would have been eight would have put me at just under the halfway point, but nine would have put me over the halfway point, right? Laps. And each lap is the night we had been climbing from like six in the morning or something. No, actually that, that one started at 3 PM. So 3 PM, it was now like two in the morning and the, the, the weather changes so crazily in the Stratton mountain one, like where it's like, hot and then in the evening you got snow and fog and cold winds and it just changes very rapidly um i'm actually wearing my 29029 uh swag right now uh in my golf hat right so anyhow so um i the gondolas were they they had to shut them down because of the wind and so there was a truck up there waiting for us so i went to the, like the the aid kit to grab something to eat or drink real quick and I was so in my head debating on, do I do one more? Or do I not do one more? Do I do one more? And you know, when you're suffering on those last like 20 minutes climbing the mountain in the day, it was taking me like 55 minutes. And that last mountain climb probably took me like an hour and 10. So the justification of going in the tent and sleeping is like, well, I'll be faster tomorrow, blah, blah, blah. Um, and so I get in the mountain, I get, I got in the car and we were waiting for one more climber that we could see. Actually, I should do this. We were waiting. In, uh, for one more climber that was running up, they grabbed some from the aid station, jump in. Well, it turns out it was Colin O'Brien. And I didn't know Colin really that well, other than that he was, he holds world records. He's amazing. Uh, super nice guy. I mean, that was evident from the first second I met him. Him and his wife just actually uh, summited Everest this year. They have an amazing story on that. So, I mean, just like, um, and then I think like last, last year he rode, he rode uh, with like three other dudes across the most dangerous waters. I mean, you know, the guy's like, you're, you're like, he's like, you're real. He's, you're really, uh, you know, he's amazing. Right. So he's in the car with me. It's me and him alone with the driver. And now we got 20 minutes together to go drive. It's bumping. And I'm sitting there and, um, we're talking back and forth. And I said, yeah, man, I'm just trying to decide whether or not I stick it out or not for one more. And, and he, he was great. He's like, well, no matter how you feel right now, you're going to be a lot happier when you wake up tomorrow morning and you got one more in because now you're past the halfway point mentally. And, and he was right. Right. So the, he, that was like our moment together, but we had also then like the next day, like climbed together for a little bit. And uh, I said, well, man, I go like, you're just flying through this thing. This, this has to be easy for you. 
And he made this comment, going back to your comment, Jeremy, and then we can talk about where we want. Um, and uh, he said, I feel pain just like everybody else. You know, it's hard for me too. Now, the difference is, is that he has work capacity built up, he has muscle memory built up, and he has some uh, experiential wisdom, uh, earned experiential wisdom built up that, that I'm still learning and developing. But it's not, it's, it's unfair to him to say it's easy. It's just that he, he's gotten so used to going to hard more often that he's built up that, that muscle memory of, oh, I'm just in that bad place where my muscles are telling me to stop. This is not a big deal. I'm just going to keep going. Like for him, he just starts processing that stuff differently. Now, there's a physical component to it on how they process lactic acid and, and how his blood uh, oxygenates probably better than people that are not in shape or haven't done that. Um, but the, the reality is, is like, um, I think people quit too early because they go, oh, well, you've done that. That's easy for you or it's hard. And then that becomes like the blockage. You know, it's hard. Well, fuck yeah, it's hard. I mean, you know, it, that's, that's why we do it. But I, I was listening. I told my wife this. I'm gonna do a separate podcast on this today on my on my other uh, on my show. Denzel Washington, when he he, um, I have this new thing I do like on Instagram, where like when I go on Instagram and I see like cool clips. All my kids are old enough now because they're on Instagram, like my four oldest. So when I see cool clips, um, I get to tag them on it and leave a note. And so like this one, yesterday's one was Denzel Washington when he received something was like. You know, it takes, you got to get started and it takes commitment and then it takes tenacity. And if you never get started, you'll never, you'll never persevere. You'll never achieve your goals. And then he said this one line, Jeremy, that was so beautiful. He said, um, I want to make sure I got this. He said, I think I screen captured it because I was talking to my wife about this this morning. Ease is a greater threat than hardship ease like and in our society today not to go on a rant because this is supposed to be a business call talking about how awesome rise 25 is and how jeremy has always produced our podcast and i have another podcast and I'm starting with somebody else and he's he's supposed to be the mentor here on this one which he is but i just wanted to share this quick little note because um i think right now our, our society's falling into the like how do we seek the easy pill whether literally or figuratively and our social media platforms and our Netflix platforms have done such an amazing job at making us so addicted to consuming other people's visions and other people's desire, like, you know, like we're seeking that dopamine hit from elsewhere. And this is something we're working on. We got to work on ourselves, but uh, you just inspired me, man. So I challenged Jeremy, he's got to go that he said May, which is like nine months from now. And I was like, May, <laughs> let's do it in 30 days, man. I believe we can do it. Like the May, May never comes, dude. Let's, let's do that. I, I promise you, we're gonna do a podcast in 31 days after we accomplish your goal, even if it's modified, but it will be like, we'll call it a training run. It'll be amazing. It'll get my button gear too. Um, and just to give people context, when Ed said a golf body, whatever I go, Ed, I live in a golf body. That is my body. And so, um, one of my goals was to, and I, I watched Ed go through this journey um, through Kokoro, which, which I don't know, is probably one of the hardest things to do for sure. Um, and I've heard just ultra marathon runners, triathletes, they say this is the hard, when they did the Kokoro, they said it was the hardest thing they've ever done. And um, I watched Ed train and I'm like, listen, I'm going to do, I'm going to commit to doing a Murph and I can do maybe two pull-ups in a row. So I like embracing the tough and, and the things that I am not good at. And so I said, well, I'll, I'll do it in May and I'm going to train. And it's like, well, <clears throat> 30 days, 30 days, you know, and I'm like, okay, well, let's, let's see what happens. And, uh, I'm, I'm willing to commit to that. And, uh, yeah, and, and the thing that I just said to Jeremy was like, Hey, look, I mean, we could literally him and I could do it right now. Like we can go in my backyard and do it. And there's no shame in modifying things. And if your goal is like, well, I did Murph or I did whatever workout or I did whatever thing and I modified it. Like, so the first time I did a marathon, I, I didn't consider myself a runner. It was right after college and I was a volleyball player and I was listening to like a Tony Robbins thing. And he said, whatever your belief system is that you think you're not, then you have to like, you have to flip it and do the opposite. And the only way you can break that barrier is to, um, is to experience something. And so I was like, okay, cool. I, I don't think I'm a runner, so I don't run. So I'm going to go run a marathon. So I signed up for a marathon. 
And so when I was researching like training methods, the, the method that, that really was like allowing me to, to kind of, you know, like, like in, in training is, is very much like, you know, like going from not doing pull-ups to like, I'm going to do a Murph in some ways is setting yourself up for failure because it's such a, it's such a leap. However, that's um, why I said may instead of 30 days. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. However, yeah. however, that's, that's not a bad thing. Um, but so, so what, what helped me a lot with the train for the marathon was like, Hey, you, there's this guy's protocol. I should, I should know what it is um, where it's like, Hey, run X amount of minutes. And then you walk for a minute or we'll run X amount of minutes, walk for a minute. And you could break that down. If that's run one, walk one, run one, walk one, and you're building up the mental capacity to do that over time, mm. that is still a victory. And then, and Jeremy, it was really interesting about that. When I got to my marathon, I didn't walk once. Like I just, I wasn't fast. I mean, that's not, that's probably not totally accurate. Like I mean, stopping, grabbing water, using the bathroom. I walked at different times, but, it, but I never felt the need to walk. Um, I kept the pace that I, I trained for and I felt good about it. And I, and I believe that too. And I think um, Kokoro is challenging for on a lot of levels. And I think really the reason why people quit more than physical cap capabilities is the, um, and if you talk to anybody who's ever been in the teams, I, I'm almost embarrassed talking about this because I, yeah, so it, it's like, um, because if anyone has noticed, the, the Kokoro camp is a mini Hell Week experience around 52 hours long, designed by uh, Commander Mark Devine. There's, there, and it was, an, it was probably one of the uh, ultimate pinnacle experiences in my life. And when people ask me, like, well, like I had a, a former fr a friend of mine, not a former friend, a friend of mine who um, is out of the teams, um, and he was asking me, well, why did you do that? Because they have some, some similar programs, but not the same. And I said, really, I did it because it scared the hell out of me. I did it because I couldn't get out of my head. Um, can I do it or not? Like, do I have what it takes? Like those core questions are definitely like the core of your inadequacy and your, your, um, your uh, like, you know, like the ultimate failure of me as a, a man, of, a, of an athlete, of a, how tough am I? Like, it can all get exposed, but the opposite of that's always also true, which is what drew me to that, which was, I think the other part of you of wanting to do Murph is, you know, inherently you can do it. Like it's in your, it's in your, your, your primal sense says I can do that. I can be, a, I can go do that. And um, Mark Devine always uses the phrase of like, you will meet a part of you that you've never met, met before. And Jeremy, I've met a part of me many times doing Murph that I've never met before. I mean, some of my most spiritual experiences have happened by training doing Murph, which I'll leave to a different, I'll let, I want you to have your own experience with Murph, so I won't share those. Um, there were things about 2929, Everstein event that were harder, much harder than uh, my experience in Kokoro. And I think mm -hmm. time and time and time passing where Kokoro was six years ago, my memory may fade on some of the difficulty that was going through it. But um, and then there's things in parenting and raising kids that are more difficult. Like I thought some things in Kokoro, like the chaos, I thought it was easy because I was like, I grew up in a family of 13. I have seven children. My kitchen is more chaotic than this. <laughs> like, I mean, they're trying to like, you know, kind of take you out of your, like part of your, part of Kokoro you're getting trained by Navy SEALs and they're, they're beating you down and they're yelling crap in your ears. That's none of that stuff bothered me. There was only one part that bothered me. You want to hear what it was? I'll yes. tag, this, uh, tag this coach in this because he was such an amazing uh, trainer and he scared me to death. Um, Mark Curtis, who uh, runs a training program now on running, like how to run, and he, he's, he's an amazing, amazing guy. He took a total quiet approach and was just murderous on – his soft way of scaring the hell out of you. The loud guy, like Chris Smith, who's a friend of mine, I'll tag him on this too. You knew you just were dealing with fire when he came blazing in. And, uh, but I loved him to death. Like I wanted to be in that presence. Um, God, um, there's a couple other guys I want to mention. Um, they're going to come to me. 
As you're exactly. looking at that, Ed, I'm just going to say a thing. Uh, I we read up. This out. I, I well, no, I was going to say, um, I, I pulled, as you think of those people and you can pull them up, um, I pulled up Colin O'Brady for people who want to check him out. Colin O'Brady.com. Oh, yeah, I was. I was. I totally got that wrong. Well, saying- colonelbrady.com slash about, and you could read about him, but it says two world records broken just to just to give context that this is who uh, Ed was talking about and uh, climbing with. But he conquered the Explorer's Grand Slam in a world shatter record shattering 139 days, summited the tallest peak on each of the seven continents, including Mount Everest, and skied the last degree to the North and South Poles. Fewer than 50 people have ever completed the completed this staggering achievement and only four in under a year. Uh, so that's just, there, there's many more things on this page that make him pretty remarkable, but that's just one, one piece. Yeah. yeah. So, oh yeah, he's amazing. Colin O'Brady. I don't know who the hell Colin O'Brien is. So I thought maybe we'll get <laughs> I don't know where that came from. I come from an Irish neighborhood. Everyone's. Exactly. So, Hey, so Marcus Green, who was one of my Kokoro teammates, just did a great interview on his podcast, uh, Enchilada Nation. Enchilada Nation. And they talked about, and Derek Price was, um, he played football at Iowa. Uh, he actually was teammates with a neighbor of mine. It was so comical. Um, but he was another, he was really tough, but I liked him a lot. I wanted to be in that environment. So I, I felt like that was the biggest honor of my life to get trained in that. And it scared the hell out of me. So I trained extraordinarily uh, hard for that. And I had a lot of good mentors, but anyway, we can talk. I don't want, I, I don't well, want to talk about me anymore. I, I, well, I, but I'm real quick, talking about it. you were saying about Mark Curtis, he, what was about the quiet? So what he you. did was there was, um, he called me selfish and it was something stupid. Like, um, we were in lines. I was a team leader in my lines and there was a person behind me and we were doing, um, somebody failed something. So, this is, to, you got to get used to this, right? And then breath work, positive mental attitude, training, breathing, breathing, staying present in the moment are probably two, and then supporting your teammates. Like that, and by the way, that's why most people fail. Even like the highest level athletes go into those environments. If they, the, 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 and this is what got me, Jeremy, this is what got me. So he got me, I didn't let, it, he got me because the tenants I, I went into Kokoro where I was going to demonstrate impeccable leadership at all times. That was, that was a big goal for me Um, because in, in, in what did that look like? Like that was a goal for me. It meant I was going to remain positive under any circumstance at any time, freezing your ass off three in the morning because you didn't sleep for two days, two, you know, over two and a half days. Um, and I was going to support my teammates. So that, that was like my focal That point. was the ultimate and hit to you. That was the other goal because number three was I will, I'm going to test Mark Devine's methodology of remaining positive and present and focusing on breath work. Can that really help me through a 52-hour event if I am able to stay positive, right? And present. Those are, those are, these are lessons that, like, as I'm saying, I'm like, man, we could do a better job around here. Like, you know, on those things. <laughs> What got me was not the yelling at me. Like there was one time like Chris Smith came blazing out of nowhere and was like, who's your team leader? Who's the team leader? Who's there? No, who's the class leader? Who's the class leader? And they just switched who the class leader was. I had no freaking idea who the class leader was. He's like, get down. And he's like, up one. I was like on my fourth pushup. And that, like it was such an adrenaline dump. I was like on my fourth pushup, ready to die. I was like, there's no way I can do that. Like he's got me. He, like, if he wanted to make me drop in that moment, he could have just kept going. And so that's why like Mark Devine even says, he looks at some of these other events that are like trying to get, bounce guys out. It's not about, you can, you can literally get a guy to drop if your goal is to get them to drop. If, you, if you're trying to get them to their edge and see if they can go past their edge and not quit and keep going without quitting, then they want you. Like that, that's the difference right? Like physical capability, everybody has a physical capability limit, right? Uh, no matter what, no matter what, you cannot sprint at your highest level indefinitely. It will break you at some point. Now, when it breaks you, do you get up and keep trying? And then when it breaks you and you keep getting up and trying, like that's the tenacity a team that would require the team. 
So wait, well, Curtis, so that, that didn't bother me. Like, my, um, man, Brandon uh, he, Haney, like Heaney, Haney, he's another guy. I think he's still got a podcast too. He was a teammate. He's a firefighter, uh, played uh, football at BYU. And he like rescued me a couple times, man. Like he was definitely with top four guys physically in our class. And um, there, I got a funny story about him and Derek Price, different story. Uh, okay, well, here's another one. Like, but okay, I, I'm gonna get, to, I'm gonna leave everybody hanging uh, on the Mark Curtis thing. So as this goes on, so like someone survived, someone came in and was like, I'm the team, I'm the class leader. And then, then Chris Smith like probably laughed at me get up and then like they went on but that's what they do all the time and when people like start physically breaking down the mental stress of that like can you can you stick it out when the physical starts breaking down and can can you work with teammates to to find ways to keep persevering and rely on your teammates there's a lot about relying on teammates in this and supporting your teammates and vice versa you know we're holding a log there's going to be a moment where maybe I have to like release my right arm to like readjust it. So I got six other people holding the log. So I have to give myself permission to receive support while giving support. And I have a couple, I could talk about this stuff all day, but here's another funny, I'll tell you a funny story. It's a Brandon Haney story and Derek Price story. <laughs> so the whole goal of it is like by 24 hours, 28 hours, everybody who's going to quit is going to already quit. It just happens. And like, I think in the teams, they say anybody who makes it past day two, the completion rate, I think is like 97%. I may have those numbers off a little bit, but most people who are going to quit, quit within the first 48 hours. But even like in Kokoro, my understanding is that most people get past the first day, all the mental, like you went through, you already went through a full night, which was probably awful. No, it definitely was awful. You've already <laughs> been, physically, yeah, you're already physically chafed. So you start, you, you've already gotten cold, you've gotten wet, you've gotten sandy, you've gotten hot, you, you've, you've broken through a lot of those barriers. The team, the teamwork component, by 24 to 20 hours in, should be looking 20 times better than you did in the beginning. And just to kind of give people context, like one of the first things they did that was just um, amazing was like, like, you know, you see it, um, if you look on like Navy SEALs, like on Hell Week, uh, they call, I don't know if they call it the breakout where like, you know, the, you're lined up, it's quiet, you're lined up, and then they just come down, all the cadre come down on you. And they start nitpicking at like the dumbest things. They start, like they would say something like, hey, hey, uh, Jeremy, uh, why do you want to do this? Like, they'll come up to you, you're looking for, it'll get right in your face, be like, why, why, do you, why are you here? And you're like, well, you know, whatever your reason is. They'd look at you, but this was shit going on left and right. It was hysterical. It was hysterical if you, crept, if you understood what was going on. Like, if, if, you, if you allowed it to uh, sow doubt, well, then you're in trouble, right? But they would say to guys, like, oh, you look like a, an Iron Man to me, like an Iron Man guy. Oh, well, yeah. And, like, and they could pick that out. Like, or you're a runner, or you're, you're, you know, you're, you're overweight, or you're, you're what, what do you actually, did you train for this? And then they say to guys, like, well, um, uh yeah well you know we've had a lot of iron man guys fall You're, they're usually the first people to fall out <laughs> and they'll just and then they'll just that will leave them with that and go and go talk to somebody else like you know they'll go up to like a woman be like you do you actually think a woman's gonna actually finish this like seriously i mean we've had only two women in the whole, and this isn't a true statement but they'll they'll make up stuff like that like like O'Keefe, like seriously, like you, you, like right now they'd be like, you look like you're balding, got gray hair. I mean, like you know, and they just say something. Like they pick the at vulnerabilities. Actress, they're just looking for they're just looking for so down, hmm. which is part of the building up process happening. Like it really is. It's like this is part of the process. It's an amazing, it's an amazing process. So anyhow, um, the first exercise, some about teamwork thing was, you know. Hey, I need a class leader. Someone's up there. Okay, do 20 push-ups as a team uh, together. Well, I'm just telling you, Jeremy, we couldn't even do five as a team together. So you're sitting there like in the push-up position for like seven, nine, 10 minutes. And they're switching out class leaders. We can't even do body squats together. Like, so that's how they start breaking you. Like that's how this starts getting in. It's like down, up. And 
the the thing that's getting measured there is how good of a job do you breathe and just do the push-up and stay present right because that's going to last you're not doing 20 push-ups you're probably going to do like 60 over the period of the next 15 minutes okay and there's going to be chaos and the adrenaline and guys this is where like holy crap this is the first seven minutes of the whole thing and you got 52 hours first seven minutes right yeah, for seven minutes, you're like, I, we can't do, like, well, I can't even do my push-ups. I've trained, I've done hundreds of push-ups in a day, and I'm exhausted already. Well, that, that's because that's, it's designed that way, right? right. So anyhow, like, um, what starts to happen is eventually the teams start getting better at communicating. We figure out who the leaders of the teams are. The leaders of the teams get better at communicating. The class leaders get better. And there's a, f- a couple of tricks on some of this, but this, uh, this is down the road. So the teams get better. So about 28 hours in, everybody's working better. So things start moving in more harmoniously. And I'll tell you, this here's the funny story. So um, Derek Price, when we got back after like a long, long day on day two, and we were beginning the evening of day two, I was given the task to get you have three minutes to get all the logs out of the trailer. Uh, like O'Keefe, come here. Yeah, hey O'Keefe, why are you walking? Everybody's split and everybody's in the um, uh, bear crawl position, which is just firing everybody's shoulders. So I get out of my bear crawl position and I start walking over to him. And he's like, what are you doing? What are you doing? Everybody down, give me 10, right? Like it's just crap like that. O'Keefe, you are gonna stay in the bear crawl position and you're, until you can figure this out. And he's like, He's like, okay, everyone relax. We'll keep standing up. Hey, can you, you got three minutes. You got three minutes to uh, get everything off the trailers, lined up properly over there. Do you believe you can do this? And if you can't do it, we're going to punish the whole class, right? Yes, I can. And so this is where like the teamwork came to a place where you're not communicating to the, the 40 people or 33 people. You're immediately communicating to all the team leaders and you, you have to give them specific jobs. Like, hey, like Haney, you're in charge of, Haney, you're gonna get it off. You, uh, Weiss, you're gonna do this. Green, you're gonna do this. You guys got it? Got it, go. And then th- this is where stuff just gets beautiful because people start working and then they communicate to their six guys, six guys, boom, boom. And that's how the line of communication just gets, r- I just got chills doing this. So then you got one team runs up into the truck, second team's waiting to grab it, third team, grabbing all the things once the third second team gets it off and they're lining them up boom 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 and we kill it like two and a half minutes right something like that so haney was a badass and he still is one but Derek price is funny right so Derek price now is like hey i'll keep you did a good job okay so now what you're gonna do is go over there and he's like he whispers to me uh a a command to go tell somebody and i do it wrong because I didn't follow his instructions explicitly. I forget what it was. It was something stupid like, do you not trust your teammates? Haney. And he picks on Haney, who, frankly, I know why he picked on Haney. Because Haney was literally the like, top four best athletes in the I would say he's the number one athlete in the, in the whole class, by far. He was a complete badass. There's a couple of young guys that were like 18, 19, that were actually trained to go to the SEALs that um they were just monsters and they were small guys they were they didn't physically look they were just amazing and, and, and their maturity and their ability to lead by day two was impeccable um but while Derek price was yelling at me and he made this a long yelling at me um and it wasn't like yeah in price had an ability to be very soft-spoken when he's yelling at you like he would talk to you like okay um, but during this whole time, he's like, Haney, up to the front, start doing burpees. And so now, now Price is giving me instructions because I screwed up. And all I'm watching is Haney, who's the baddest student in the class, just doing burpees. And Jeremy, I love it. Haney was, Haney was my favorite people at this time. And you know what all I was thinking about it? This is the only thing I was thinking about. I wasn't. <laughs> I'm glad I'm not doing this. What's that? I'm, you're saying I'm glad I'm not doing this? No, well, close. I was like, thank God it's Haney because anybody on the class right now, except three other guys, will be freaking dying and couldn't handle it. I was able to stay totally calm because I knew Haney could handle this for the next hour if he had to. And it didn't last that long. It only lasted like three, three five hours. 
<laughs> it was only 59 minutes. No. No, it was, it was actually only like three minutes, but it was just, um, like, that was kind of the set. And that, like, that didn't bother me. Now, if he took the weakest teammate that was struggling the most and put them up there, which if you watch some of the shows like uh, that, that are really good shows on it, then that probably would bother me. Like, I, I, feel, I would feel like, like, oh, like that's a teammate. I let them down. Haney, I was like, no, he's got this all day. He can do it. It's okay. Let's just let me. And all I had is make sure I'm listening to instructions properly so that I could communicate it directly to the team and we can get Haney off the bat. But, um, and Brandon was one of those guys that, like, I mean, again, like I'd go to war with in a heartbeat, like uh, physically, literally, all in between. Now, so none of that bothered me. The one thing that bothered me, so I told you what my goals were, whatever. We were doing burpees at one point, and then we had to be in the plank position. Well, my teammate who was behind me, who happened to be female, I don't think it's really relevant to share that because um, she was a badass. Um, and, um, but um, my boots were in her face. So I didn't have enough spacing. And Curtis came up to me and he's like, O'Keefe, how selfish are you? And I was like, where is this coming from? And why is he calling me selfish? Because I'm trying to be anything but self. Like it, we, he got me because he got me. Like it, it just fired me up inside. Like my whole life's about not being selfish. But then there's a part of me being an entrepreneur, going my own route, trying to do things on my own. There's a very selfish component that has served me very well. And then I'm like, I, I felt like the whole moral like internal conflict hit me right there, which, you know, like true leaders don't want selfish people on their teams. The people who are on my team don't want to selfish lead. Like it really got me and it was quiet. It was very quiet, but he, he freaking got me. And then later on that night, like when it was, um, I was doing bear crawls in the sand, going into the ocean and you had to come out and I was in a, I was in a totally different pod than his. He must've been 30, 40, 50 yards. He ran a, um, he ran a really cool station in the ocean where you went out there and you sat in the ocean, you're in groups of four at this point, they broke you all up, maybe, maybe six. And, um, he had this whole thing about why he loves being in the ocean. And, um, he would ask his questions and whatever you answer, he's like wrong, <laughs> which always, which always, but it was, it was really cool pod where like you literally freezing ocean. It wasn't after it was cold, but like 2am, 3am, something like that. And he's having you, he asks us to lie back and just focus on our breath and breathe. And again, you're tied up. You're not, you can't complain. And you're probably in there for a good seven to 10 minutes. And that was like kind of the rotation of the pods, maybe a little longer. I really enjoyed that one. So this is where like Jeremy, like where I challenge people, like you don't know, like that, that is a horror. Like if you put me in the middle of the ocean right now, like right now without any training and I've been a sissy the last you know year, that would get to me within a minute. Like I'd be like, get me the hell out of this thing. Um, but again, like uh, he got me again later or, or before that, where he saw me like bear crawling to the ocean. He's like, okay, if you were slacking every time I look over there. And I was like, what? I was like, in my head, like, what, what, what is he, what is F him? Like, and this is all in my head. I'm like, I'm not slacking. I'm working my ass off. It's like three in the morning. I'm bear crawling in the sand, getting in the ocean. I got to go get wet and sandy, go back here. And I'm like, I'm doing everything, you know, so. So that's what I mean by like, that's the kind of subtle stuff that those guys who've trained high level people, um, and it allowed me to, allowed me to get better. It allowed me to get better. I got to get better at those things. Um, Jeremy, Hopefully man, we people, with, you know, I think we just created a whole new podcast for both of us to stick up on our shows, but I, you know, that was fun. Yeah. And, um, it's, it's about pushing yourself mentally and physically and having people like you and other people push you more than you believe you could push yourself when you say, listen, don't do it in May, let's do 30 days. And it shifts you shifts how you're thinking about it shifts your paradigm. And uh, so we'll, we'll end it on that. But um, and, no, one thing I want to say yeah, just for the audience is just, I mean, Jeremy Weiss is the epitome of selflessness. Thank you. Like you are, you are probably the most selfless person I know, which is why I love seeing that you uh, and John have created an entire empire with your podcasts and coaching services and networking services, supporting people getting their voices out through Rise Twenty Five. Because 
you've really taken your unique strength. I mean, you're a chiropractor by trade, father and husband, but as a professional, like you really uh, utilize your gift of being unselfish and caring for people and figured out a way uh, to amplify that and, you know, uh, uh, make a good living out of it and really impact lives through it. So congratulations to you. And people should know that. I feel like I've talked way too much about me, but that's because of you, you, you're good at what you do. You, you, you proactively care about people and by you're so good at it that people get stuck talking about themselves and they feel like so good being around you because everybody wants to talk about themselves. Even if they say they don't, you know, it's the whole Dale Carnegie, how do friends influence people? What's your most favorite word? It's your name, you know, and uh, I just brag and actually I feel totally inadequate because I am nowhere in the shape that I was six years ago. And, uh, but I got the spirit, man. I just gotta get the body's got to still respond, man. You can be mentally tough. You can meditate all you want, but if your body doesn't physically join you, you're, um, you're not going to be able to do so, you know? So, well, I appreciate that. That means a lot because I highly have respected you even before we knew each other and uh what you're about so i appreciate it and hopefully my goal will push you a little bit too right so oh man well well jeremy asked me a couple questions i'm like oh man i gotta research stuff i had this i used to do this stuff i used to get so geeked up about the stuff we will we'll get on we'll get on a goal together maybe we'll share with the podcast uh both of our podcasts like in 15 days we'll do a simple test pull-up test today we'll go back because i gotta work on my pull-ups i did pull-ups uh you know, why two days ago, and usually I just murder those. Like it doesn't even affect me. And I was like, it was, it was. Uh, I did fine, but my gosh, I, I got some of my yeah, whatever. We'll talk about it later. All right. But cool, all right, everybody. Hey, what's your website, Jeremy? Just uh, go rise twenty five dot com. Go to inspiredinsider.com and check out more episodes. So. Yeah. What about I, yours? Where should people check you out? Well, edokeeflive dot com is kind of my hub. Well, mm -hmm. it's it's got to get updated, but then. Ed the Ed O'Keefe Show, The Uncommon Way is my uh, podcast. And uh, Jeremy and I are talking actually today about relaunching it and uh, some cool stuff we got going on. So please uh, awesome. subscribe and let's go, man. Let's go. go. There. All right. Thanks, everyone. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the sand right now. I'm feeling like a hundred grand